Today, we're going to be doing traditional open air balayage. There is a difference of what I see people do with foils. That's more of a foliage. Uh, traditional balayage is exactly what we're going to do today. Um, and I'm going to explain who's the candidate with it, who is not the perfect candidate for it, uh, the do's and don'ts of this, and how to mix the product. That's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to touch a, a few key points of that. I just want to wait for more people to chime in before I move on because I don't want to move forward just to go backwards because I know everybody's time is valuable. But meanwhile, we'll talk about this lightener. So with Lumine uh, Starlight, you'll see the big old seven on it. So this is our clay-based lightener. So what that means is I can do this whole entire uh, hand-painted look without any foils. This lightener will harden up a little bit into a clay. So that way, when you're painting, you're laying another section over one another, you're not having to worry about product transferring. So that's one thing why uh, we created this lightener so we can do open air hair painting techniques. Question? No, two comments, uh, they love your classes. Thank you, I love you guys that joined my classes. Um, I'm excited that today we got a perfect model. He came in to warm me today. I cut his hair, what, last week? I could have said last week, I was like, dude, you have to be my, my, my model for my class. Uh, perfect candidate. Uh, hair was amazing. We gave him a great haircut. Uh, but now I'm like, let me tack tackle in with some color. So he was like, dude, go ahead. Um, never done color before. He's never done color in his hair. So this is his first time. Don't, don't blush, but he's a virgin. Uh, hair wise, everything else I don't know, but hair wise, you know, virgin hair. Uh, so. I'm glad he's here because we're going to tackle it and do all that. Any questions before I move ahead? But anyways, so back to Starlight. So with Starlight, uh, you can mix this lightener several different ways. You can mix it one to one ratio, one to one and a half, one to two, or one to three. My personal preference would be somewhere in the one to one to one to one and a half range. Only reason is uh, due to texture. So your mixing consistency will change with texture. Uh, with him, I will probably be doing more of the one to one and a half. That's usually my standard for everything, but it does change depending on if the hair is fine, if it's medium or coarse. So that's where texture will come into play. Developer is mainly for speed. Developer does not give you the lift. The power is in the powder. So developer is for speed. So that way, it depending on how fast you can put something on and apply it, that's where you'll change your developer. So if you're a little bit of a slow painter, uh, you can go down to 30 or 20 volume, but 20 volume will probably be a little too slow. But again, if this is your first time uh, playing with uh, doing open air balayage, I would probably recommend you doing more 20, 30. But, you know, if you kind of like, I got it, but I want to build my speed, you can try 40 volume, which is what I'm going to do today. And again, this is part of the uh, Oyster family that we're doing. So they do make the bottles a bit bigger. Reason why I got a small one in my salon, I rarely use 40 volume unless I'm doing this or if I'm doing high lift colors, which don't want to get off topic. But yeah, so I got a smaller one because the 40 volume I have, honey, it's still collecting dust on the shelf. Any questions? Alrighty. And all these wonderful products you can get at Salon Spot Wholesaler. So again, we'll be using our Lumine Starlight 40 volume. And then for him, I know we're going to be using the ultraviolet shampoo. And I'm going to send you home with one of these. So you'll do this about uh, once a week or once every other week. You don't, you don't shampoo with this one that often. This is going to remove any, uh, any yellow tones or, you know, gold undertones that you don't want. If you want to be more like on the cooler side, this is going to help uh, reduce that. Alrighty. So a few things before we get started. With, with open air balayage, uh, your brushes are very important as far as not the, really the type of brush, but as far as uh, making sure you have at least plenty on site. Uh, I'm going to have, I have two different size brushes. So I have one where I'm doing more artistic design and then I have a wider brush if I'm going to be doing more of a full panel. But also I keep a dry one in case I accidentally get it on something I don't want to get it. It's almost like an eraser. I can just blur it out. And then you're also going to want to have some gloves because sometimes you will probably get it on your fingertips. And then keep a towel handy because balayage, especially open air balayage, can get pretty messy. Especially when hair is long, um, it can get pretty messy. So 
you want to have at least a, a, a damp towel so you can wipe away any residue because you don't want to have a residue of the product in your hands and you're going you're gonna to grab another section. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing uh, my lightener. Oh, before, before I move on. So with this one, excuse me, you can actually mix it with the other lighteners that we make in Illuminate Family. So they are intermixable. So just know the more lightener that you use, for example, let me grab the clips. Uh, that's Starlight again. So for example, like Eclipse, if I want a little bit more lift than seven levels, um, I would do probably maybe 30 grams or 40 grams of the Starlight to probably about 10 to 15 grams of Eclipse into it. Uh, reason why you do not want to mix more of Eclipse is because then you'll lose that shell-like consistency that I was talking about earlier. So I would say the ratio will probably be two to three parts of Starlight to about one part of Eclipse or even Spotlight. Um, they're both nine levels of lift. Uh, again, you don't want to mix more of this one. I know it may sound right. Oh, if I mix more of this one, I'll get more lift. That is, you know, somewhat true. But again, if you want to still keep that shell-like consistency uh, with clay, if you mix less of this, you're going to lose that. So this is important. All righty. Go ahead and mix. All right. Any questions that are on the comments? All righty. And again, this does get a little messy. So I'm going to open it in here. There we go. And I love that now we have these beautiful, nice blue scoops in here. Before they were a little little, so but now I'm like, oh, we got a bigger scoop. All right. Let's turn this on. And please weigh your product. Uh, don't eyeball it, because if you don't weigh them, you're not gonna know. You're not gonna know how much you're using. So I mix a little bit of it at a time. So with him, I'm probably gonna do. I start off with 30 grams. And if I need more, I'll just mix more. So yeah, so weigh your product, don't eyeball. A lot of a lot of us are a little bit older now. So our eyesight may not be the best it was when we were in our youth. I don't care how long you've been doing hair. Alrighty. I'm gonna grab that 40 volume over there. Excuse me, love. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um classes. I uh, miss classes too. I can't wait till we go back into in person. So we're going to be using our 40 volume. Let me put it in there. So it was 30 grams. So now I'm going to mix it to that one to one and a half ratio. So it'll be 45 grams of 40 volume. There we go. Boom. Two okay, cave goes a little bit, 0.5 grams over. So whenever you mix it, I like to use a spatula. I don't like to use a whisk because I feel like it breaks it down too much. So with balayage, with this clay lightener, um, I take my time mixing it. It's not a race. So I don't like, because if I go too fast, since it is a different type of consistency, it's going to get all over the place. So I kind of like to go really slow in there. Just break it down. So either you're a cook or you're a baker. With this, I'm definitely a baker. So this is the consistency I was talking about. So this is doing it that one and one, one to one and a half. It's almost like a Greek yogurt consistency. If that, if those who need visuals, so just break it down. Again, it's not a race. Like we ain't going nowhere. Unless the battery dies, and I'm like, okay, we gotta get off. <laughs> okay, so this is how I break it down. And just make sure you get off the sides. Get that really, really good. You don't want to have any uh, bubbles or or flakes because if we still have uh, like I don't I, would, I wouldn't say bubbles, but if we still have like chunks or clumps of it, whenever you're painting, you will it will come onto the the hair and then it may leave a spot because you didn't break it down. So just take it, take your time breaking it down. So we're not again, this is not a race. Question. Yes. Um, I can't speak on other lighteners because um, I don't I don't use them. I'm sorry. Uh, 
But I would say, you see, because different manufacturers, they have different ingredients in their products. So as far as like even a developer, I don't know what kind of, what if it's a looser developer, if it's a thicker developer. So to be honest with that one, that's a question I can't even answer because I don't, I wouldn't know um, about it. But you can give this product a try. The very uh, high quality products at a very affordable price. So come down to the store or order online. We can get it shipped. All righty. So here it is. So I'm going to turn it over. And this is the consistency I was talking about. So this is like that Greek yogurt consistency. That's why I like about this one. All righty. So real fast, I want to talk about zones. So you can, I want you to actually zoom into this real fast. Let's, so let's talk about zones. So whenever I'm painting, you do not want to do this. And then also you want it to be as tight as possible. So this is what I told the client. Uh, whenever I'm doing open air painting, don't pull with me. Actually pull against me. Because what that does, it keeps the, the hair very uh, taut. And so also, again, you don't want to do this. Because when I'm painting, look how my comb is going to glide through it. So imagine that. The product is going to glide through. And when I'm painting, I really want to do surface painting. I don't want nothing to transfer at the bottom at all, whatsoever. And another thing is, whenever we're loading our product, we're not going to load up here. We want to start in around uh, zone two or even three and walk the product up. Because let's say if you started up here and you're trying to blend, there's no room to blend now because now you started way up here. At least if you're, you're, you're applying it down here, at least you can start blending as you're walking up. So again, with tension, I would say hold it like this because it's flat. And then, you know, it is, this, is, this doesn't hurt the client. Does that hurt? No. Now, if I did one little strand of hair and pulled it that way, yeah, it's going to like out, you know, it's going to do all that. But if you're pulling multiples at the same time, it's fine. But I still like to ask because we do have clients that are just the most tender-headed people in the world. I have one client that when I shampoo her hair, because I like to give the hair a good scrub, a good exfoliation. Um, and I can't even do that. I could, I could barely do this. And she's already like, that's, that's, that's too much pressure. So just ask anyways. But yeah, so again, and what is who what is balayage to begin with? I know we hear that word so much in the salon and people are always saying, oh, I want balayage. I want this. Really, balayage is what I'm doing today. It's pretty much it means sweep to sweep the product on. That's what balayage really is. Um, and it's supposed to be more of a natural sun kiss look, which is perfect for him. Because this is something that he won't have to maintain himself. He is a busy college student. Um, so they're not going to have time to come back that often. So this is perfect for him. And like I was mentioning earlier, um, let's say he liked this. It was cool to do it just once. That's it. He doesn't have to do it again if he chooses not to do. So with that being said, down here, usually this, this hair here doesn't get as much sunlight. So I want to mimic what the sun would have done to the hair if he was out, if he was out on the beach the whole entire summer, how that, how that would naturally line up his hair. So down here, I'm going to focus more towards the ends because as soon as this layer falls, you're not going to, usually the sun doesn't hit down here when this is falling. It'll hit more up in these areas up here, but usually nothing down here. If not, if it, it'll be just the ends. So. For me, balayage, it's the way I'm doing it, which is a traditional way to do it. I feel like you have to be at least a natural level six or lighter. If you're someone as dark as me, you will not get that uh, nine level lift or seven level lift. It's just, you're not gonna get it. You're gonna get lift warm. Uh, it doesn't matter what liner you're using. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. Um, you're gonna lift warm and you're not going to get the results you're getting so that's where you have to do more of a foliage look which is usually what people are used to seeing but they're calling that balayage but that's not balayage what i'm doing today will be balayage so i recommend this uh this way that i'm doing on a natural level six and higher i mean you can still do it on a natural level you know five and under, but that's if they want to be warm. But if they're trying to be 
a cool, bright, bright blonde, you're not going to get the results. Just letting you guys know right now. And one thing about what I'm doing is I'm loading on one side and not the other. So that's one thing as well. You don't want to dip your brush in there uh, and load it up there. You want to get it on one side and the dry side. And so I'm going to start down here in these zones. And just sweep it up. Again, I'm not trying to go all the way up to the root back here at the bottom because the sun wouldn't have naturally lined it up anyways. And this is, this is supposed to be a C-like motion. So I'm kind of going in and lifting off right there. And then this is where I can kind of blur that out a little bit to kind of give it more of a blend right there. So then for since his hair is not as long, I'm going to use the back of my hand as my paddle so I can get those ends. Just like that. And again, what I tell you about balayage being messy, see how I got it on my fingertips? So I'm using the towel to get it off of me. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working in this different motion. I don't want to start all the way up because then this side would be the lightest and this side won't be as light. So I'm one, I want it to lift evenly. And I'm going up at an angle. But what I'm doing is on my corners, I'm working up higher in the corners. And that way you keep that kind of natural uh, light in the center. But again, hold this with tension. So then I'm gonna move this chair a little bit over with me. There we go. Boost you up a little bit. And double check, the sound's good, right? Just wanna make sure. <laughs> and I've been talking this whole entire time, but I'm not, I'm not too far into the class. I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. Thumbs up if you can. I'm working it in there. Let me get out. Yay. And again, with also with the way I'm doing it, it's buildable. So I'm not gonna load a bunch of product at once. I wanna build the product into the hair. Like again, this, this is not a race. The only race I want to see is me going into the fridge. <laughs> I'm painting those ends in there. And again, wipe your fingertips off before you grab another section. Now the towel could be damp if you wanted to, but I'm using a dry one. So I'm gonna finish this back at a angle. Here we go. I can hold it with tension. Unlike that the product stays where I'm putting it at, so it's not going anywhere. I'm also not trying to go super high in the product. Hold it together. Use the back of my hand. Here we go. And this one I can kind of do it freehand because of the layers that we put in here. So I can kind of just freehand it like that. There we go. Wipe your hands. So right here, back here, you're gonna go back, you know, back and forth. I have to make sure I comb it through, make sure there's no lumps in the hair. Again, start at this angle, but start in zone two, three, then walk it up so I can blend. Catherine said the baby is on this. I what? 
looking over your glasses. Uh, <laughs> trying to look educated, guys. So here's where I'm kind of want to blur that out a little bit. See, this is like my eraser. That's why I have a dry brush. Then I'm gonna mold them together and work on the back. Try not to overthink it, guys. Again, this is this should be something that's it's supposed to be organic, more artsy, because it's what you see is what you get. So if something looks like it's not gonna blend, go ahead and try to blend it out. Uh, but it's this is supposed to be really fun. Again, wipe our hands off. And we're gonna finish this section right here. And again, I'm not looking to over lighten him. That's why I'm, I'm taking pretty uh, thick sections because a lot of this down here, it's not gonna be, um, it's gonna be natural still. Just like that. If you guys hear dryers in the background, I am at the salon, so people are working today. Well, a few people. Not many people work on Mondays. Can you get that dry brush? Get rid of that. There we go. Last section over here. And then we're going to start on this area right here. So when I paint this, I think of uh, think of your phone signal, those who have good signal. <laughs> so you want the bar to be raising up like that to this way. That's what that's the kind of way you want to paint it. But then again, you can paint V's, you can paint W's. Um, for this look, I want it to be like if I'm raising the bar. <laughs> Get rid of that right there. Whoops, I'll give another comb right now. I'm going to paint these ends again. So the back of my hand is like my spatula. There we go. I like to step back a little bit and just kind of observe. And then this is where I'm going to just do that there. Perfect. So now we're going to go to this section. Again, make sure my hands are clean. Let me give another comb because I just dropped my comb. There we are, and just a little coffee sip. Yes, I got my name on my cup. Brenda might give me this. Mm. You know you're not a hairdresser if you don't drink if you don't drink coffee. <laughs> this is first thing in the morning. Anyhow, so I'm gonna finish it off. How are you feeling? Feeling good. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure everybody's comfortable. Alrighty. So I'm gonna show you guys real fast um, how there's gonna be no product underneath here. There's gonna be product on the ends because I'm gonna, you know, use my hand as a, a a paddle. But just in case you guys, you know, you may see this like, oh my god, it's too much. It's gonna be too much light. It's gonna be very organic. Cause think about it. I'm only painting the surface, like I said. So when this breaks up, all this dimension is gonna be left behind. It's gonna, so this is gonna give it almost like a baby lighted look. So very natural, very organic. Uh, so you're gonna see the ends are gonna be, you know, pretty bright, but you're still gonna have some uh, some lightness going up higher. Uh, so when this breaks up like this, all of that on the top is going to be popping out and the bottom that's in here that's not being painted, is gonna be like a natural low light. Just in case you guys are probably like, what is he doing? Isn't that too much light? So, again, 
I grab my section, start here, and then walk it up. And build it, build your product. So again, it's that C motion. Well, it's probably hard to see on camera. A little more, then get these ends. And here I can go a little bit heavier on the bottom, on the ends, because I want that to be where the focal point of this is gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up. And look at, you get, can you see the bottom? Yeah, you can. See how there's nothing that transfers through? So that's how you want this to be. The only thing you want to transfer through are, are the ends. See how I painted the ends? So when that breaks up, that's gonna be a natural dimension. So like, again, yeah, I know it may look scary to you guys, like, oh, what the hell, or, you know, um, no. Nah. So that's when you know you're you're doing a good painting when nothing's transferring through. Because again, this is supposed to be organic. I mean, I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again. This is supposed to be organic. <laughs> And by the time I get to the top, I will be mixing a fresh bowl because I like to have fresh product. I don't mix a big, big batch. And holding it with tension is helping me not let the product transfer through. Also important too. I'm gonna get my dry brush just a little bit. There we go. This is me blurring it out. So think of like your makeup when you're contouring and stuff, kind of getting your, your brush in your, um, trying to blend. Same thing with this. Wipe your hands. <laughs> Important. All right. In the last two seconds up here. Then we're gonna tackle the, the side and the top. Okay. Any questions? Good. That means we're all getting some education on then. So I'm gonna have you look down, look up, I'm sorry, look up a little bit. Right there, perfect. So I like to paint in different directions, either going up in certain areas, coming down. So you see this right here? Zoom in right here. This is why I said don't don't panic. So see how I got it right there? A dry brush. And if it still has product in it, you can kind of wipe it on your towel and just go like that. It comes off. What are the thing on TikTok? Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. Just go like that. Bam, already off. Nothing to worry about. Just want to let you guys know that things happen. Nobody's perfect. Don't care how long you've been in the industry. You're going to mess up someday. Or you're going to make little silly mistakes that you can fix, though. Alrighty. Back of my hand again. That's my paddle. Lay it down. There we go. Last section in the back. Um, What's that? You just got on and you're Alrighty, so I'm gonna give you a quick overview. I am doing traditional open air balayage. I mix our Starlight Lightner that lifts seven or more levels of lift. And we are open air painting and I mix it with 40 volume. All right. 
So that's that. And then again, just get the ends. Just like that, and just take a look at the back. So now, with with his haircut, um, we did layer him a pretty good. So, I wouldn't work this way. You can, but instead, I want the lightness to travel to his face. So I'm going to take a diagonal forward. Not diagonal back like we do in foils, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to do it on the other side. How about that? Hold on. Let's do it on the other side. Turn it this way. Sorry about that. I'll show you on this side why, what I mean by that. So let's say we do diagonal back like we do with foils. Okay. See how this side's thick? This side's thinner. So the thicker the section, you're not going to get enough lightness around this area. You're actually going to get more lightness here because the area is thinner. Why would you want the lightness back here? You want the lightness to be up here. So now if I do that in reverse, okay, now if I do that in reverse, now this side is thicker, this side is thinner. Does that make sense? So now to be to protect his ear, I have a piece of cotton. Just in case anything were to get on his ear, I wanna make sure he's fine. So put that cotton there, just like that. And then on the top, I'm actually going to be on here. I'm going to be using cotton to just to protect certain areas. So I'm going to paint this way. And just walk it up. Get my dry brush, kind of blur that out. And use the back of my hand as a paddle. Just like that. Wipe your hands clean. Now I'm gonna continue that going up. So now I'll take the next section. Now, if this section is too wide for you guys, you can break it up into two sections. You can do that as well. If you feel like there's too much hair for you to in your hand, you can just break it up. Or you can also brick layer it. So let's say you do this side, you don't do this side, you can do skip the side, do the back. You can do that too to give you um, different dimension. The possibility is Again, the possibility is endless. It's whatever you want it to do. It's not, oh, this is a standard placement. To me, that's just it's whatever your client wants. So you're gonna have to make it custom. You don't want to be a one-trick pony, and you don't want to be a robot. You know, Bali is supposed to be fun. So you see the little clamp that I got right there. I get my dry brush again. Get rid of that. Okay, got rid of it. Yay! What's up? Thick? Yes, they are. They are pretty thick because I want more dimension left behind. He doesn't want to be a total blonde. He wants to be still, like the name of the class, very sunkissed, natural and organic. If I would have had thinner sections, he would have been overly blonde and he would have had no, none of his natural left. So I decided to make him thicker. Because I'm only painting the surface of this hair. Let me show you guys. 
Because if I lift the underneath, see how there's nothing painted there? Only the bottom, the bottom is painted. So that's the kind of look I still want to give it. So again, when that breaks up, the, the lightness is going to pop right on top of the, the natural hair. That's why I made this, this the section to be to be thicker. But again, this is customizable. If you have a client that she wants to be really, really blonde and she wants a lot of it, take your, uh, your section smaller. You lift up like this. Perfect. So I'm gonna finish this off and then we're gonna I'm gonna stop here and do the other side. So I want them to lighten evenly and equally. Bam. How you doing? Doing good? Now you go back to this side. So same thing. So I'm gonna go add it that diagonal forward. My neighbors are here, so you can hear them. <laughs> we are a fun work environment. So again, that cotton around the ear to protect his ear and his skin. So I'm ready. I'm what I'm doing. Those who are just chiming in. So I'm just going to repeat what I did on that side. Now I'm going to go this way. And everything is about body position too. You can work it up. Hold that down. Yeah, if you guys will be will probably be on live for another hour or so. So if you guys want, you can share this video with a friend if they need, you know, they want to see something different. Uh, we're doing balayage on a male client. Um, so, you know, guys get color too. Not just for girls, or women. So could you do this look with foils? Yes, you can. Um, but his hair is light enough that I can do this technique on him. That's what makes him the, the perfect candidate. As I was, I was, I was explaining earlier um, that th this should be done, like the way that I, the style that I'm doing, this is what balayage is. This is where it got the name from. So technically you want this to be done on a level six and higher. Um, you can do it again on a, on a level five or lower, but you're not gonna get the brightness that we, we get with foil. Not with this. Unless you want to be warm. And if you're okay with warm tones on a level five or darker, then you can do this look. Trust me, I've tried it in the past. And I would always wonder why can I get really, really blonde like I do with other clients that are different levels. And texture matters. And so does the starting level of the hair. Turn this way. There we go. Let me just blur out any potential lines. Response. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the section up right in the front. So here's where I'm gonna probably divide it in half. I'm gonna hold in that tension. Back of my hand. Wow, 
Pipe those fingers when you grab another section. So here we go with this section right here. I'm gonna work that there. So this is a small little detail you can do with your guest. the back of my hand. Alrighty, so that section's done. So now I'm gonna finish off the other side and then I'm gonna mix me a brand new batch of liner. I like it fresh for the top. Or usually after 20, 30 minutes of it sitting, I like to remix anyways, because the products will be already done. Yeah, again, balayage, like I said earlier, it gets messy. Take a look at the, the cape. It gets messy because it's a this is from the shell like consistency that's breaking apart. So yeah, it gets messy. <laughs> cut that in half. You can see how wide that was for me, so I'm gonna cut that in half for me. Load it in zone two and three, walk it up. Again, show the bottom again. Nothing transferred under the bottom. See how I hold that tension? So there's nothing down here. Everything is up here. Grab my dry brush. See now I'm just blurring out those little possible lines. And then I'll just paint the ends. Again, there's this, there's a variety of ways to do this. Uh, you can do W's, you can do V patterns, you can do slants, or you can do full panels. Possibility is endless. You're the artist, you know, you can do what you gotta do. And the last section up on the side. There we go, I'm gonna just blur this out right here. So again, this is very artistic. How many of how many of us on here are painters? Painting with a twist counts. Those who win a painting with a twist and painting a canvas, that counts too as painter. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna mix me a fresh, okay? This is why. 
So when a product becomes loose like this, that's it's that means it's it's done. This is why you should remix. This is why I recommend you guys mixing a smaller bowl. Cause now it's like, look at that. From earlier when when I turned it over, I'm scared to do it now because it may fall. Um, but that's when you know you need to remix a uh, fresh batch. So I'm gonna dump this out. Mix a new batch. Yeah, never mix a big old bowl thinking, oh, I, just, oh, I don't got to remix because wherever you start it, that's where the product is stronger. And so that right there is going to give you the, going to be brighter there than anywhere else. Let's get right here. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Mm. Coffee sip. So the top, to be honest with you, I don't need 30 grams, so I'm probably going to use 20 grams. There we go, 20.5 is fine. Alrighty, and again I'm using uh, Lumine Clay Base Lightener. Our starlight. And I'm gonna mix about uh, 30 grams. I like to be as precise as possible. Boom. And we're using our 40 volume, volume developer. This. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. So I'm using my spatula. Again, I'm not gonna go super fast, just kind of fold it in a little bit, get off the sides. Can you see like if I was to go like that, see all those little stuff coming out? See all that dust? That's why I say don't go too fast. Take your time. But now when it's already in there, then you can kind of go a little bit faster. I want to break down all those little powder, like crystal like stuff. Make sure you break that down. Just like that. Then you can get the edges off of your spatula. <clears throat> on my long hair, uh, on my long hair, could you do this in highlights and between highlights for a quick retouch? Let me, uh, what level actually? Just speaking levels. Blonde meaning level seven, eight, nine, or ten. Let's speak levels. So I, can, so I can know what to, the better, the best answer to give you. What level is your client? Real fast. See the difference from earlier? Maybe before I threw it away? That's what I mean by you need to remix your product. Yeah, what level is your, is your, your client you were talking about? Need to know. <clears throat> Sorry. Actually, you get on this side. This is the side you predominantly mm -hmm. kind of part on. Yeah. So earlier, I had asked him what side he wears his hair. He predominantly parts it this way. So I'm going to stay true to that. But he is still able to wear it this way if he chooses to. He kind of goes uh, this direction, the other direction. But this is his. Uh, his side that I guess you can say it's your go-to, or just the way it goes. All right. So with him, I'm gonna do a herringbone pattern. Seems to be my favorite. Uh, okay, level. Is she or he level seven? Is this this level here, or lighter or darker? That's what I need to know. We, we're, we're professionals. We got to start, you know, speaking our professional terms. So is your client a level seven naturally, level eight or nine? If they're in those levels, yes, do this that I'm doing. If they're a level six, 
maybe even under a six, I would not recommend it. Put them in foils. Um, so let's say you did highlights, right? I'm gonna try to answer your question to the best of my, my knowledge that you're giving me. Light seven. Light seven, okay, perfect. Yes, you can. So what you could do is, uh, you can foil the hair, but think about it this way. When they're in foils, you're incubating. So those pieces may, those, those strands of hair may be lighter than your ends. So I probably would not recommend it. Um, now, if the ends are a level 10 or nine and you need to do a retouch, yes, then I would foil the hair. Then I would paint the excess hair on the outside just to boost them up. But if it's a level seven all over, you can do this technique all over. Um, but if you put them in foils and whatever is out of the foils, they may not get as light as was in foil because the ones in foil were probably in foils a longer period of time. So with that being said, I probably would not either do it all in foils and do more of a foliage, or you can paint it like how I'm doing right now. That's the way I would probably approach that, if, if it were me. So up here is where we're going to give him his uh, base frame detail piece. So I'm going to have you look up for me. I'm going to close your eyes real fast. So I'm going to paint this underneath. But I'm going to lay a cotton right here so it doesn't hit his face. Again, excuse my neighbors. <laughs> they seem to be having some fun, and I wasn't invited. So I'm going to hold this hair with extra tension. <laughs> They're having some fun, I'm telling you. For what? Uh, for what I'm doing to him or your question? Or is this the same person? That it's I... the same person. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let me paint this real fast. So he wanted to kind of get into down in certain areas. Sorry, this is my detailed area. Let me get to that question in just a second. Sorry. This is where, like, this is what he's going to see every day in the mirror. He's either going to like this hair or he's going to hate this hair. So I ought to be extra cautious right here. Give me just a second, okay? You get in there. Look at that detail. The little strand. So now I'm going to go over with my dry brush. Make sure there's no kind of... That's your own hair is tickling you, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom, boom. Okay, then I'm gonna paint these ends. Yeah, keep your eyes closed for me. So I'm gonna go a little heavy here. Then I'm gonna pinch that. Then I'm gonna bring back this way, but I'm gonna lay a cotton down. You see how nothing got on the back? Oops. I'll get a new one. Okay, don't like that first. See how nothing got back here? But now I'm going to want to paint those ends. These colors are not going to stay today. Cotton. I want to touch his face. Alrighty, third time's a charm, right? Bam, and there we go. Perfect. Not even touching his face. All right. So your question, that if I, the way I'm understanding it is, you're highlighting your client. And then you're going to tip out the ends. Is that correct? If you're going to tip out the ends, I would just tease the ends and put them in foil. That way it lifts evenly 
Because if you do it like what I'm doing right now, and then you're painting out the ends of the foil, chances are those pieces of hair is going to be um, not as light as what's in foil. So I would probably foil, foil your client up. I'm going to turn you this way. I will foil, foil your client up. And then what I would do is um, tip out the ends. So let's say this is in foil, right? Just an example. Say you decided to put this in foil. Then what I would do with the hair that's left out, yes, you were talking about painting it. I'd probably go in and tease it out. And then paint those ends and put them in the foil. That's what I would do. Hopefully that kind of helps you out a little bit. All right, let's get this on. Let me get another piece of cotton ready. I'm ready. Do I want these sections to cross over each other? Question? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if you were going to ask me a question. Okay, then I'm going to blur it out just right there. I see a possible little line. Boom, boom. Then I take it down here and then paint those ends. I'm gonna go heavy on the ends. That's where I want the brightness to be. Get that cotton ready. Actually, I don't need cotton because I didn't paint it right at the face. So then from here, oops. And I'm gonna turn them this way. Is this on top? It's gonna be a lot of back and forth. <laughs> That's how I keep it kind of natural. So then from here, I'll take this section and I'm gonna take it this way. I want them to kind of crisscross one another. Now, if you want it to be very, very light and a lot of blonde, you could cut this in half and do two panels. But I want to keep it as natural as possible, but still give them enough light. I'm going to do one whole panel because this down here, again, it doesn't see through because I'm keeping my tension. So this is not going to go through and bleed onto the bottom. But however, I am putting more pressure towards the ends because at least I want the and on both sides to get it, to get the light. So that makes sense. And again, I'm starting lower because I can walk this up and blend it up. Do me a favor, honey. Can you um, get a clip of the bottom what I'm doing as I'm doing this so they can see how it's not seeping through? I see what I mean, how it's not going through, so that's going to remain naturally uh, his natural. So again, this is his first time coloring his hair, doing it into his hair like this, so I don't want to just kind of break him in a little bit. I don't want him to get nervous and say, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> that's what I mean, how it's not seeping through. It's all about pressure. And that's why I'm holding his hair with tension. 
So now I'm going to go and lay this on my hand because I want to paint the top. So again, using my hand as a paddle, I'm putting a lot of pressure because I want this to purposely seep through on the other side through the ends. Like that. Pop your hands clean. And then we're going to do it over. So now we're going to intersect this to that side. Probably getting dizzy, huh? <laughs> Cause I want this look to be very disheveled. So I don't want it to look perfect. I want this to look um, just very organically feel. Like I don't want it to look perfect, like it's perfectly done. Cause then it's gonna look artificial. Like I want people to see his hair and say, oh, something looks different. I don't know what it is. Those babies at the end. Again, this is a very messy product. Not product, but the procedure wise. Alrighty. So now it's just going to dissect this side. Go this way. Oh, hold on. There we go. So you can already see this is going to go this way, then this is going to go this way. Again, I want to build this product onto the hair. I don't want to load a whole bunch and regret that I put too much, you know what I mean? I want to build this to the hair. Take up nail polish. When you're building another coat, another coat, another coat to darken it. But this is kind of the reverse. The more you kind of see less of the hair, but more of the lightener, that's going to be the lightest it's going to get because you're building to it. That's why I don't know if you guys noticed about the whole time. I kept adding more to the bottom on the ends. That's where I want the maximum brightness to be at. Okay, almost done with this section of hair. So then I'm going to process and then I get to discuss more about what's going to happen next. So now I'm taking this this way. So I'll do that, and then this will be done.
The mixture was one part of the Starlight Clay Base Balayage Lightener to one and a half of the 40 volume developer. So I did I did this to be a one to one and a half ratio. But again, you can customize it and you can mix it one to one, one to one and a half, one to two, or one to three, whatever your consistency, what your client is gonna be. And again, remember developers for speed, not for power. So more developer you put into your product, the weaker is gonna be. So just keep that in mind as well. Don't think because you're adding more developer, you're gonna make it stronger because developer is acidic. Actually back here, this is where this finishes off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of leave this out to create a negative space. We'll weave again to create another negative space for back here. And this is what I'm gonna paint. Because again, I want this to separate that, that to separate this. I'm gonna paint this. And there you go. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna Go ahead and clean this up. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a quick Q and A. I can do a recap of what we're doing, but let me go ahead and just clean him off a little bit because I know again this is a Baliat is a little bit messy. So I want to make sure he doesn't have any product on him. He doing all right? Yes, that's what I said earlier. Remember, Baliat. Traditional, the way I did it today, is for clients that are level six and up. Let me get a swatch book. One second. Let me clean them first, but let me get a swatch book. Sorry. Hold that thought, because I do want to give you guys a visual of what I'm talking about. I look pretty, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Come over here, Les. Okay. So this is what I mean. I'm going to zoom into this because we need to see it. So what I did for him, you want it to be this level or lighter. Level five and darker, that would not give you this or anything like this. So your answer is correct. Doing on Latin hair. What well, also depends, because there's some Latinas or Latinos that are naturally this color. So we can't say, we can't speak for all, because there's some that are naturally this color. Like my sister, she's a natural over here with green eyes. So and she's full blood Latina, she's my full sister. So you can't say, oh, it's going to make every Latina's hair orange. You just got to be, uh, you got to specify what you're talking about. I like to talk in levels. So if they're here or here, you're correct. It will leave it in like the warm orange space. That's correct. So that's why I say this traditional is recommended for level six and higher. Because he's around here, naturally. That's why I was like, this was perfect for him. Now, had he been around here or this color like mine's, no, we are not going to get anywhere here today. No, nope, not with this. Maybe in foil, but not with that. So this, again, this is traditional balayage. I'm going to keep emphasizing that because I do have clients that ask for what I did today, and they're naturally here. You're not going to get that with that. You got to put them in foil and do, you know, either some back combing, some baby lights, some back-to-back -back technique. So when we people, when clients hear the word balayage or... Um, hand painted or sun kissed, you can still do it. You just gotta let them know you're not gonna be in this family. You're probably gonna be more 
Let's see. You're probably going to be more here or probably here. And that's probably not what they want. But that's what they'll get if you do this. Look, if you're a natural five and under. So does that visual kind of help out a little bit? Yay, thank you. Um, again, so what is this? Let's do a quick recap. Uh, let me process them. What time is it now? Okay, so let's talk about what we did today. So we use Starlight Lightener. We mix it into a one to one and a half ratio. So one part of this lightener to one and to one and one half of 40 volume. We mix it up. And then I know how he's going to lift because I looked at his natural level. So what I'll be toning him with will be this ultraviolet shampoo from Lumine. It smells wonderful, very pleasant. And you can probably get a feel of how much pigment that is. You know what, let me get a piece of cotton. Let me dip it into some cotton. So there's pigment there. So this is gonna help uh, remove those unwanted uh, yellow tones out of the hair that happens over time when the hair tries to re-keratinize itself. So again, refer to your color wheel if you know why we have to use purple. How does it smell? It's not good. Yeah. I like it. So he's gonna go home with this today. Um, I'm feeling like Oprah. You're gonna get purple shampoo. You're getting purple shampoo. We're all getting purple shampoo. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be his take home product. So I'm gonna leave it up here for you. I already have one that I have in the back to use for you. Any questions? Any recap? Anything else that I've done? Again, uh, this is a fun sun kissed look. I am. Happy that he came in. He said yes, because at first I was like, he should be my model, but you know, I have to ease him in. But again, uh, you see how I can lift this up? There's nothing down here but the ends, which is what I wanted it to happen. So everything else, so he's still gonna have his natural color right here. So the only thing that got painted was the surface. So when this hair breaks up, um, all the light is gonna be inside. So there's a lot of his natural still left on here. I know it probably looks scary just seeing, just you know, chunks of blonde there, but guarantee it's gonna be very natural and organic. So there's a lot of uh, natural left underneath and that's a big section. So, so you have a lot of your natural left. But I don't know, like, again, it can look scary. Just, you can see globs of blonde here, globs of blonde there. Um, correct, that's why we did the whole zigzag method. So when you part it this way or this way, you can wear it whatever side. Any questions on live? Cause I wanna make sure, uh, we're good, nobody's time feels wasted. So he's in a process for about uh, 30 minutes and we're gonna shampoo him and then we'll be drying him up. So uh, just let me know, leave comments below. We're probably gonna end this live in a few minutes if there's nobody um, interacting. Just wanna make sure again that uh, you guys don't sit for the whole process because this is what he'll, he'll do for the next 30 minutes. So just in case you wanna grab a snack, come back, we'll go live again with the, with the final results. Any questions left? I'll give you guys a few minutes. If there's no question, we're gonna go ahead and just stop it here.